I think counselees, when they come into counseling, they have the wrong goal. It's like in Luke 23, where the soldiers are mocking him and saying, if you're the king of the Jews, save yourself. He, he saved others, let him save himself. If he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. And so they're totally missing the, the goal, you know, mm -hmm. and our counselees do that too. They think I should be able to save myself. My strength should come yeah. from within. And th that's what you're that's a good point. addressing in this. What were you going to say? Well, that? it goes along with that. Um, I think it's important to, to realize uh, Jesus went through the, the frailty of being human. He didn't mm. go through the depravity right. because right. he's sinless. That's right. Um, but when we talk about the atonement even, it's not just that he took upon uh, uh, himself our sins. He took upon himself our sorrows, according to Isaiah 53. Mm. And we see him as that man of sorrows throughout Scripture uh, to the point I, I love, you know, in the Gospels where he cries out to the Father and says, if there's any possibility, l let this cut pass. In other words, I don't, want to, I don't want to go through this suffering. Right. But nonetheless, not my will, but thine yeah. be done. And one of, one of the things that uh, is so profound to me is in, in dealing with people who are in deep sorrow is they are coming to me or they're going to a secularist, whether it's a, a therapist, whether it's a psychologist or a psychiatrist, you know, whatever it is, they want out of a sorrowful state. They're looking for an answer to their sorrow. And scripture tells us like in Revelation 21 um, specifically that when we finally see Christ face to face, all sorrow, tears, death, pain will be done away with. But we know, we know sin will be done away with completely. We'll be finally restored to that image. But I think sometimes we miss that it's also human fragility. That's, that's when these things mm. that we're longing for will be fulfilled. And so uh, like 1 Thessalonians 4 says, we sorrow, but not like those who have no hope. Yeah. So we, we, we know that we're fragile, that this world is really a broken world, broken uh, uh, jars of clay, as you pointed out. But there's a hope. You know, right. it, restoration is coming. Well, well that's I would, powerful. I would suggest that that whilst there's the amazing hope that is yet to come where there's no sorrow, where there's no suffering, um, but we could also we we can also say um, that Christ deals in a way with our weakness right now, um, because mm -hmm. you know we become a new creation yeah. in Christ, and so we can live in the power of Christ Which right now. Joy. Right, and uh, you know we 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 are able, yeah. you know, First Corinthians ten thirteen, we are able in Jesus Christ to resist. Mm -hmm. You know, he won't put any. So, so there, there's a sense. There is a sense there where, if we are regenerate, and a new creation in Christ, there's hope right now in the power of Christ to, um, to resist sin and live unto Him. It's not a hope, so it's a certain yeah. hope. But it's but it's not my power. Mm -hmm. It's not my right. power, and that's what the Christian understands. It's it's not mm -hmm. me. It's the power of Christ in me. And so I'm, I, I need to continue Hebrews 11, looking under Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith. That's where I need to keep That's looking. Right. And before, it's, before it gets there, it says, lay aside not just every sin, but every weight and sin. Right, mm -hmm. right. And, you, and, and that's the fragility and depravity. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, I'm just thinking of James 1 as we're talking here, to count it all joy when you encounter every different level of of. Uh, trial or, trial. you know, wh whatever term you want to use there. Mm -hmm. And that goes against a normal way of thinking. If you don't have your eyes on Christ, that doesn't make sense. Right. You know, yeah. uh, how, how could you, because God tells us this is what life should be. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have that biblical perspective, then when those things come along, it's just devastating. It's like, okay, life is not going how I thought. It's not, you right. know, I was told it was going to be different. What's wrong with me? Right.